Hi, my name is Brian, and today I'm going to show you how to build a counterflow protein skimmer. This is going to be part one. There will be several parts to this because A, I don't have all the parts, and B, it's just going to take some time to put it together. So what you're looking at here is the base of my skimmer. Um, I have approximately a 500 gallon system. I want a little bit of extra capacity so I can add a couple of the smaller display tanks to the system. I have a 350 gallon display tank and about 150 gallons of something of fugium. So this is going to be a 12 inch diameter skimmer. Um, I'm using the uniseal at the bottom. I'm using a concrete base that I poured last week to stabilize it. Um, that will help make it a little bit safer. You can see here it's not going anywhere. Um, it will feed from up there and then the, put, the plumbing will go up and then come back down and this just helps to regulate the water level. And then we will go through my UV skimmer or UV filter. And um, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a second piece of pipe here and um, that piece of pipe will, will go up um, and establish the body. Okay, so the first step is I'm going to build the top. You can see the uh, sump that cracked on me in the background here. So uh, the basic design is I'm going to put yeah, something like this, followed by another one of these because I actually want a little bit of a rise, followed by this. And then I'm going to put a bucket here, silicone it, and glue another one of these in, silicone it. Looks like that'll actually need to be a little shorter. The idea is to sandwich the bucket between a couple of couplings. So, Always twist when you insert the, the fitting. Make sure you get a good, good clean seal. Good enough. Keep in mind, this isn't going to hold water, it's just going to retain foam. But I still want to make sure it's a good seal. It'll cause me fewer headaches later on in life. But I do a good job now. And on this fitting, there's actually a, uh, a little reservoir here that can be filled so I'm going to make sure I get glue down in this reservoir now I need to take an accurate measurement of this best way to get an accurate measurement it is to use a, a semi-precision instrument like this Harbor Freight micrometer it indicates it's 4.503 so a four and a half inch uh, bit should be just fine one of the benefits to the saltwater hobby is that you have lots and lots of buckets for left over from salt if you happen to buy your salt this way. So I do, and so I'm going to use a leftover reef crystals bucket, and I'm going to center this as best I can. There's a little dot here. And so I've now created a hole in my bucket. So you can see here I've got a, a hole in my bucket. I've taken the cutout and actually put it into my recycle bin. Who knows, maybe the city of Houston will actually recycle it. If not, I get to still feel good about it. And that's a nice tight fit, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to switch the camera view so you can see what this will... So you can see here that this is a very, very tight fit. Again, this is not final assembly. This is just rough assembly. So I'm going to set that there. 
And I'm going to figure out how high do I want this to come. Now, that's too tall. It's not quite enough, so I'll probably cut this one in half. But the basic idea is that this will sit in here. Foam will come up and fall over the edge. And uh, this will act as an oversized collection cup. And I, I really only want this to be just a little bit larger. Um, so let me go ahead and cut this and, and start the assembly. So first things first, I'm going to put a bead of silicone on here. This is aquarium safe silicone, commonly sold at GE, I believe it's, or I'm sorry, at Home Depot and Lowe's. I believe it's uh, GE Type 1. I'll check that here in a minute. So I want to get a nice big bead on the bottom of this. And this is what's going to seal my bucket in place. Now this is RTV 100 from Momentive. You can buy this at Granger for eight or nine dollars a tube. It is an excellent aquarium adhesive for glass aquariums. It'll work just fine in this situation. So I'm just going to push this down. Now I'm going to add a bead on the inside. More big goop of glue in here. And then assemble it. Push and twist. Alright, and that is about perfect. So let me. So you can see in here that the uh, fittings form a sandwich. And it gives me a nice uh, collection cup. This happens to be full, so I'll send it to recycling. So, and I'm going to take the smoother side, and that'll be the top of this. It does not actually need to be glued in. It can just sit there, make it easier to clean. And again, I will show you guys what I've accomplished. And so there you have it. Um, if I had to buy this fitting, it would be horribly expensive. If you're building a smaller version of this, you could use a smaller bucket and you can use smaller pipes. Um, I'm going from 12 inches to 4 inches, and that's a 1 to 3 ratio. That seems to be about the ratio I observe in uh, commercial systems, and so I'll assume that there's some benefit to it and that they have tested trial and error. Because I'm pretty sure if they could make them work with a one inch tube, they would. So this is this is actually a 10 inch to 4 inch fitting. It's what I was able to get for free. Um, and then I'm going to have to purchase or fabricate something to go from 12 inch to 10 inch. I measured and determined that 60 inches is about the right height for my uh, tube. Okay, so when you are trying to brush either primer or glue on, you need a chip brush. So I'm going to use a couple of these. These are real inexpensive. And then the easiest thing to do is just pour it in a cup. And that way you can get plenty of it on here. That looks like my primer ate my cup. So that is an issue that you have to watch out for. Yep, 
completely dissolved my cup. So I'm going to cheat and just kind of dump some in here and spread it around with the brush. Same process I'll apply with uh, the cement. I'm going to just put a little pool of it and spread it around with my brush. And then I'm going to quickly assemble my pipe. And I'm about to put this together, so I'm just giving it one additional coat. There's no such thing as really too much glue on these. down in here and add a little bit of glue to the top of this bead to make sure I've got an excellent seal and so what I've done is I've taken a shelf bracket that I had laying around and I've taped a chip brush to it and I'm going to dip this in solvent and this will let me just get down in there and uh, glue something that I just can't reach by hand so this is how you reach down inside the pipe and you're able to you know run this along here and get some glue on that crack okay now at this point a 12 inch piece of pipe is not like a 3 inch or 4 inch piece of pipe. It's going to take a few days to get a good hard seal. The cement that's down in this joint is going to take some time to cure. So I'm going to leave it alone for 2 or 3 days and let it cure. The next step is to either install a coupling or you know, basically transition from here down to 10 inches. Thanks for watching and I hope you uh, have enjoyed the video and I look forward to you watching part 2.